Welcome everyone. I'm Amanda Shi. I'm an anesthesiologist and intensivist and today we're going to be going over what my day in the ICU looks like. In the mornings, on my first day of service, I spend a lot of time going through my patient list before I even get to work so that I'm prepared when the overnight attending is signing out to me. An important part of every morning is also sipping on my Nespresso, which definitely keeps me going for the day. Sometimes I will start my mornings by pre-writing some of my notes because some of the patients I will be taking over the care for have been in the ICU for days to weeks to even months. And the notes can take a little while in order to organize my thoughts and understand the time course of the patient's ICU stay. I also sometimes try to get a workout in in the morning. So here I am on my spinning bike. It's about 6.30. Into the hospital. I'm in my office and it's time for scrubs. Just want to make it very clear that hospital scrubs are not fashionable. I've gotten a report and now I'm going to run for coffee. When I was a medical student and resident, Anytime the attending offered to buy coffee or breakfast, uh, I really appreciate it. So I try now as the attending to pay it forward. I went to go get our team coffee and now it's lecture time. The residents uh, and fellows are listening to an educational lecture while I hide in this workroom uh, to write some of my notes really not a glamorous job doing uh, ICU sometimes because there's just a lot of notes to write and one of the things I missed about training and fellowship was I didn't have to do that. Um, that being said, it's important to document what's been going on and document my thought process and plan for my patients. The other thing about being a critical care anesthesiologist at my hospital is that I carry a special airway pager and called the RICU pager, which is a respiratory ICU pager. It means that any intubations or respiratory distress around the hospital, we get called to evaluate. I would be starting rounds right about now at 8.30 in the morning, but in order to protect patient privacy and to adhere to HIPAA, I'm just gonna show you this scene of an empty ICU room, um, which is missing a ventilator and some of the other supplies we would normally have in a room with a patient. Hey guys, it's about 11.30 a.m. and I've just finished rounds. I just went downstairs to go get some lunch and I'm in my office right now kind of giving you an update. So in the morning, what typically happens for an ICU attending, at least in our schedule, is that we show up about 7 a.m. We get sign out from the overnight attending, so learning about each of the patients, what's going on. And from there, we, in the first part of the morning, I personally like to go see all my patients, especially at the beginning of starting service to get to know people. At that point, I would go over some of my notes, start kind of pre-rounding in my notes and pre-drafting my notes really takes a long time to write notes, I will say. And at that point too, in the morning, our residents have lecture at 8 a.m. So they listen to lecture while I'm kind of working on notes and other things. And then at 8.30, we start formal rounds. So on rounds that is comprised of myself as the attending, a fellow, residents, nurse practitioners, the bedside nurse, uh, sometimes the respiratory therapist will come by depending on what's going on, and our ICU pharmacist. And we so appreciate 
our ICU pharmacists. They're really a, a really helpful part of the team and really contribute a lot to the team as well. And I'm super, I was just talking to our ICU pharmacist today about how lucky we are to have someone with us on rounds to, to contribute to patient care. So on rounds, we talk about overnight events, we go over the plan for the day, and we also figure out um, any kind of other changes we need to make. Things that we also do on rounds is as new topics come up. So today I have a PGY2, so a second year resident or CA1, meaning it's the first year of anesthesia, uh, as well as a CA2 who's a third year resident, um, but second year in anesthesia. Um, I have two of those residents that, you know, as things come up, I get to ask and probe and do education on topics that are relevant to our patients. So for example, in the midst of this pandemic, I will say that we are starting to definitely see COVID patients again. And with the COVID patients now, I will say that there's been a change in my thought process and our management of these patients. I feel like this time around, at least we have more options for these patients. So I was a fellow during our first surge here in Boston in April and May, and I saw the devastation and I felt the stress and I felt how hard it was to be able to feel like we didn't know what to do. And now this time around, we have therapeutics, we have some more data, we have some indications of which way we can go, and we're trialing new things. So our institution was a big proponent of early intubation for these patients, and now we've started to use more high flow nasal cannula. And so there's been an evolution since the spring. And for that, I feel much better going into this surge, though I would just say, you know, it's so tough because I personally have seen how bad it had gotten in the spring. And as a result, I am extremely conservative. I didn't go home for Thanksgiving. I haven't seen my parents in over a year. I haven't been able to see my family in a while. And I don't actually go out to dine at all because I want to try to make sure that we can be as preventative as possible. After we're done with rounds, this is the time that our team will start to work on different consults, to contact different team members, to coordinate care and make sure that we execute the plan that we come up with in the during rounds. This is also the time when sometimes we have other types of meetings like morbidity and mortality. So for example, today I will be joining in on a virtual morbidity and mortality meeting uh, as a part of one of the ICUs in order to review and figure out you know, with patient care, what are some things that we can reflect upon? What are some things that we can improve upon? What are some systems issues that come up that impact patient care? So that's something that we'll do. Additionally, as I alluded to earlier at any time this hot potato of an airway pager can go off. Additionally, we have a couple of open beds right now, so we're anticipating that we will get some admissions and as admissions come through, we'll go and assess those patients. So the rest of the day is really about making sure to continue through with care, admit new patients, and then later in the afternoon, I will walk around again so that we've gotten updates on what's going on with patients, what have, has changed. In the ICU, patients are constantly evolving and changing because they're critically ill. So as a result, it's important to constantly be reassessing and determining if we need to change our plan or make updates based on consults that have come through and advice and other types of information that's generated. As a result, things will continue to change and we'll kind of walk around again in the afternoon. And I sign out at around 5 p.m. and then I return again tomorrow. Some of you guys might wonder what my schedule is like as a critical care anesthesiologist. What every single institution is a little different on the way they schedule their critical care anesthesiologist uh, and every institution has a different schedule for their intensivists overall. So even the medical ICU has kind of a different looking schedule than some of my um, emergency medicine critical care uh, colleagues, which is different from some of our cardiac uh, anesthesia and intensivist colleagues. And so everything is a little different depending on the unit. But currently my schedule has been that I'll typically do about a week of daytime shifts. So five to seven days, depending on what 
unit and then two to three overnight shifts which is 5 p.m to 7 a.m um, every month so that's every month one week during the day a couple shifts overnight and then the rest of my time is filled up with or time which i think has been a really great balance admittedly i came to a point where I really struggled with anesthesia in terms of um, I felt pretty burnt out and I was getting a little disillusioned as a resident and I had a point in time when I wondered if I really wanted to practice OR anesthesiology but now that I'm in attending and I've kind of transitioned roles and I see things through a different light I really see the value that's added by doing an ICU fellowship and being able to bring those skills that knowledge base to the operating room and apply it to our patients one of the most common things we see in the surgical ICU is that patients come to us after surgery under resuscitating, meaning they don't get enough fluid or they don't get enough blood to account for the blood loss that had occurred or they have ongoing bleeding and need further care either in an operative setting or a supportive setting. So those are things that I take with me to the operating room and, and make sure that I'm using various markers of someone's uh, resuscitation or their perfusion, their ability for their blood to flow to other vital organs and use that information to care for those patients in the OR. I really, really struggled in the operating room when I was an anesthesia resident with being by myself all the time in there, feeling kind of lonely. I mean, obviously I'm there with, I have an attending that will come in and out and give breaks. And there's a surgical team, there's a circulating nurse, there's a scrub tech. So it's a, there's a group of people in the operating room, but I felt like I missed out on more of a team-based approach to patients. And that's why I really love being in the ICU because I get to rely and work with experts, with people that bring their skills to the table. And all together we synergize to make sure that the patient gets the best care possible. I'm gonna enjoy some lunch now, get on my Zoom meeting, and then give you some updates later. I finished signing out. Um, it's currently 6.15 uh, just because I kind of lingered. I like to follow up on patients and um, talk to the residents and to answer their questions. It's the time of year when a lot of residents are starting to think about what kind of fellowship they might want to do. And so because our anesthesia residents after about a year and a half of anesthesia have to start thinking about whether they want to apply to critical care or cardiac anesthesia, I just wanted to stay back and answer some questions there. But otherwise in the afternoon, we just checked up on our patients, made sure the plans were all set and in motion and that everything looks good so that I could hand off to the overnight attending. I'll be back tomorrow morning. So I'm just gonna head home, get some dinner and go from there. So hopefully you enjoyed this pretty basic day in the life. I'll answer more specific questions as they come up. Feel free to leave some questions in the comments if you want me to address any of them in future videos or if you have any questions at all about this day in the life and things that we do as critical care anesthesiologists. So I'll see you next time.